You're such an asshole. Uh, good evening, children. Um, Alex, I got your super chat. I, I did the screenshot, so I won't forget it. We'll get it at the end of this one. Um, kind of, kind of an interesting, simple question here. Um, on this client's video request at 4.30 to 5.06 mark, you mentioned he lied to himself about the value of those degrees. How did people back in the day before 1950 or whenever uh, know they are choosing a bad degree? An example, I was born in 1995. Now I can find it in worthless. How would, how would of other done it? How would of others done? How would have others done it? Link required, blah, blah, blah. And this is the Clary test on David Draymond. And uh, I would presume uh, David Draymond uh, seems like an older fella here. And we always have the grandfather clause on the Clary test where it's like, okay, any degree back in the day was a good degree. <clears throat> so let's go and, and be a little bit more, um, I don't know, comprehensive yet simplistic. All right. People made decisions back in the 50s as well uh, because stupid people have always been with us. Uh, so there were stupid people making stupid choices. There are stupid people making intelligent choices by accident, or maybe they sat down and thought it. But the, the 50s were not this perfect world that was portrayed in, in, in the movies. It certainly is better than what we got now. Um, but uh, I, I'll give you a perfect example. Probably Probably the worst decision made by society in the United States was in the fifties where it's like, let's just give our baby boomer children everything. What's the worst that could happen. And now uh, the, the good times created the weak men. And now here we are. Um, so just keep, it's not, it's not that black and white uh, photography pun intended. Um, and also I like, it, it's kind of interesting because you were born in 1995 and it's like, yeah, I never thought about that. You got the internet. Like if your parents loved you, uh, if they loved you a lot, they'd maybe tell you the answer of questions. They're like, what, why, or what's this, what's that? But then you could tell your parents like kind of were sick of you when they're like, lay it up in the dictionary. Ah! Never mind, just one of vocabulary. That's all. Um, so but now, yeah, you if you were born in 95. You add 10 years, that put you 2005. So you're 10 years old. Yeah, you definitely had a smartphone by the time you were a teenager. Or the technology existed, and certainly the internet existed by that time. So, yeah, you just had this wealth of information, all the information of human history and human knowledge, <clears throat> conveniently accessible. And then I, I could see how it'd be like, well, how did people not know? Um, or how did people figure it out back then without this information? Well, what they had back in the 50s was a thing called common sense. And I would argue that even though they decided to spoil a, a generation of children rotten, people were still making much wiser decisions back then, like spending less than you made, living on one income, putting your children first, perhaps too much so in the boomers instance. Um, and what you have, this is in the first chapter, essentially, of, of my book, How Not to Become a Millennial. <clears throat> it talks about how it's a laughable joke that uh, today with roughly 50 to 100 years of the social sciences, uh, we think this, the social sciences, we have the answer to everything, even though the social sciences are have been provably, uh, have been made provably false and, and are debunked and they have no authenticity or legitimacy. But they thought, oh, if we take, oh, we can, I mean, think of something amorphous as poverty. You're not going to get rid of that or, or discrimination. Well, people just aren't going to like people that are different than them, no matter how much you try and no matter how wrong it might be. <clears throat> What's even worse is when you think you, you're going to figure it out, you're going to solve the problems and that you know better than well, what was the alternative. Oh, I don't know, the 200,000 years of human evolution and trial and error. And scientific and ooh, look at us, we have a model, we have a technique. We did polling that doesn't hold a candle to the 200,000 years of human uh, evolution and experience that we learned through trial and error, it, even instinct and intuition as to what was good. And there was this thing called common sense. I, and, and you could say like, well, wait a minute, and you're only focusing on the United States. There's this whole group of people, two whole groups of people that thought they knew better. They thought they had the future figured out. They figured out how to make everybody independently wealthy. It was called the Soviets and the Chinese. And just ask how the Soviets and the Chinese did back in the 50s and the 60s, especially the Chinese. <clears throat> so um, 
just because the internet was not around, did people lack common sense? Or did it mean that people were misled by pie in the sky, poppycock, and bullshit? What? I never have to work again? Oh, that sounds so good. I won't ever ask how that's going to work. But if nobody works, who's going to make all the food? Shut up, you bigot! Or what would they call it? Bourgeoisieist, whatever they called. Whatever the name was the communists called people back in the day who asked logical questions. What are we going to get a water? Shut up! You go work in the gulags. You get us our water now. Um... Yeah, so I was born in 95. Now I can find it in worthless. Uh, how would have others said? So it it was common sense. Common sense was much more practical because you didn't have a constant bailout. You live with the consequences. And probably uh, somebody in your families, your immediate family, made a mistake. And since resources were a lot more limited back in those times, and they were, go look up a, a, a budget back in the 1950s, what the average person made, you had to make things count. And one of the things, I know it's boring, but... um. It, it is really telling is how expensive clothes were back in the day. Like what percent of the family budget went to clothes? Now you don't think about it. You just goodwill, whatever. It was before a lot of the textile manufacturing techniques came along and we outsourced it to second and third world countries where the labor was super cheap. So clothes kind of like food became much cheaper, but clothes were a, a significant part of the family budget. And if you rip your jeans, you know, don't go out with your good clothes. I mean, your mom would get, even in the 80s, your mom would get pissed. <clears throat> um, so there was some kind of forced budgeting. There wasn't all these nonprofits and government programs to bail you out of not necessarily your mistakes as a child, but your parents' mistakes of having you as a child they could never possibly hope to afford. And as that kept going on and we've shielded people from their mistakes and, and it now people are just like, there's no familial memory of pass this on to my son so he knows how to fix his car so he's not stranded like I was that one time in 1937 you know 100 miles away from the nearest mechanic <coughs> so uh, because there was nowhere near the welfare states humans actually had to support themselves and they were much closer to reality so they had much more of a uh, an awareness of how the real world worked and thusly had more common sense now you have the internet but Okay, interesting question to point to you. You have all the information. We know worthless degrees don't work. We know what degrees not to major in. We know what causes poverty, yet everyone keeps doing it. Why? Well, because we've removed people's their, their consequences from their actions. Like, people are still going to school. Well, men are going to school less now. They're smart. They're wisening up. Girls are still going. just And both men and women are majoring. Those that do go to college are majoring now at highest levels than ever, that since I last measured it on the NCES, uh, in stupid things. And so it's kind of interesting that if you give humans, I shouldn't say give, if you remove cost and consequence from humans' actions, they will they will go into pie and poppycock and pie in the sky land. Are you actually convinced, like I'd say now, at least two full generations of women to want nothing to do with men? Though I do have... As more data comes in, I'm starting to wonder whether women truly biologically, genetically, historically really wanted anything to do with men, which is a pretty dark and macabre observation. I can't deny the data that I've been seeing. Um, but let's remove that dark, dark um, data that's that's coming across my plate. But you, you – okay, let me rephrase this. You have convinced women to leave children for work. You have convinced men to leave children for work. You've convinced. I know somebody whose child is majoring in journalism. How? How? The only way. How? Even though you have all the data, is because we live in a world where lies are the last and final luxury good, as I like to say it. Follow your heart, and the money will follow. Big is beautiful. They put um a guy up on Playboy, whatever, a couple issues ago. Um. It's whatever you want it to be. You are no longer tethered to reality. So yes, for an empiricist, for someone who likes living in the real world, like the data was right there. The data was right there. How is anyone majoring in sociology in 2022? Because they want to. And there's a whole group of people who keep up that lying facade. And more importantly, there's an entire group of taxpayers being forced by people who vote Democrat or socialism or labor, depending on where you are, to bail these people out of their mistakes.
And so you can live in this, this light. You can abandon common sense because there's really no consequence to doing that until, you know, like we print off so much money that rent goes up. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. And then you can't afford uh, rent or you're priced out of the housing market because you didn't study economics. But, hey, you voted for Obama. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I love those pictures of the girls just looking at Obama like, oh, it's like, oh, yeah. yeah how's that home ownership coming along? Oh, it isn't. It isn't. Oh, my God. You know what? Let's print off more money this time. See how that works. Um, so it's it's kind of <clears throat> back then they had more common sense because there was costs and consequences to making the wrong decision. Today, even though the dad is there, people prefer to live in the well, dieting is another thing. This even predates the Internet. How long have we known the secret to losing weight? Eat less, work out more. This, you can refine it beyond that, but that's that's basically it. That's all we you know. That's all you really need to know. How many people actually do it? And nearly nobody. Why? They want the lie. They want the, that they can get away with it. That a guy's going to still find you beautiful if you're overweight and fat. And I've talked to a couple gals where I'm like, do girls know? Like, you know, if this happens and that happens and this happens, no guy is going to really no no Prince Charming anyway is going to want to have anything. Oh no, no. I'm like, I'm like, no, nope, our Prince Charming is coming. He's just around the corner. Every girl, and one girl, like, I think she kind of knew it was BS. She's like, no, no, we know our Prince Charming is coming around the corner. It's like that's not happening. And and you could you could bang on your drums all day that the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. But if it's something that someone doesn't want to hear. <clears throat> there's a, a lot more people with a lot more money, a lot more power and influence than you. That's going to indulge these people in the, in their lives. As long as these people give them their money, vote for them, pay $500 a credit, whatever. And so that's it. You obviously are more empirical. You looked at the dad. You said, I'm not going to major in this dumb crap. This is stupid. Why would I? And, and I, sadly, as I experience more and more and more, just a common sense person is, is starting to become an Uber mensch. You know, a, a truly, genuinely uh, a smarter, superior person who's like, I'm not going to major in that. I'm not going to have kids I can't afford. I'm, whoa, I'm going to hit the gym. I mean, we're talking an exceptionally rare and intellectually brave. I mean, look at Thomas Sowell, just as one example, where, I mean, he was a communist indoctrinated back 60s, 70s, like, oh, black power, all this and all that. For him to sit down in that environment and look at the data and economics to become one of those ardent pro-capitalist free market type of people, that, that is rare. We're talking one in what, 10,000 minds? I mean, exceptionally rare person um, to override your environmental conditioning and programming and an ultimate, I say, indoctrination and brainwashing. Um, and, and you're, I mean, not, not kissing your ass, but you're one of the guys that did that. You know, I've sold tens of thousands of copies of Worthless. Since what the decade easily a hundred million people have gone to college. You majored in worthless crap. I didn't I didn't make a dent. I didn't I didn't I didn't do anything. Why? Because I could I should have been writing the secret or follow your heart and the money will follow. And Prince Charming is just around the corner. Or single moms are for mature men only. That's a great book by Derek Jackson. Totally recommend it. It's it's awesome. <clears throat> so that's how they did it back in and, and I'm and they still made bad decisions. You know, they, they still made bad decisions in other areas. It, it's, you know, and there was no way to go back and say, well, where you know, are we going to measure all decisions of all people? About the only macro measures you could come up with looking at, okay, how does the generation, how are they doing in making the right or wrong decisions? You can look at deficit spending to GDP, national debt to GDP, um, children born out of wedlock, percentages thereof. Labor force participation, um, and you'll just see a, a general decay within the United States. But um, I don't think any of that has to do with access to the internet or lack of access into the internet. I think it's just technology making people lazier and lazier, and an increasing you know people defaulting their human nature to be lazy, and they'll reach out for any rationalization to excuse that behavior. And that's that's what you got now. So I don't think the people in the fifties were necessarily um, smarter, but I think their environment made it like, no, you better make some decisions because there's costs and consequences. But now, now we have a nice little yay team socialism. Uh, let's go to Alex Patino, our truck driving Latino agents in the fields. Miss Super Chat, five bucks. Most expensive pair of jeans I've bought were $80 about 10 years ago. After that, went back to buying at Ross or Burlington and Walmart. Uh, yeah, Walmart's good for jeans. Burlington Co Factory is good. I don't know what Ross, I, I, is that a 
Is that like a discount clothier? Uh, Goodwill is always still a, a great place. I love Goodwill. You get some good shirts that people just throw away because they're, you know, sports team didn't do well. Or I guess a lot. Okay, now I will be fair about this. I get away with some pretty good modern day clothes. And the reason why is I think a lot of teenagers wear the fanciest clothes. But since I'm a short, thinner guy, I actually fit into, you know, young men's, you know, like a, a 15 or 16 year old boy's clothes. So I'll get some, I'm like, oh, this is a perfectly great. Oh, yeah, this is even fashionable. What's going on? Some, some kid grew another two inches. Don't fit in it no more. All right, let's go through the super chat. Man, we got a lot of people tuning in, almost 200 people. Are you guys all bored on New Year's Day or what? Because um, tomorrow's Sunday, right? I know most, most of my audience, we don't go out. Okay, all right. There we go. Okay. Let's scroll through the super checks. Alex Patino, truck driver, Latino agent in the field for $2. Good luck trying to get a loan in the 50s. Yeah, you had to have really good, really good credit. I didn't even have credit scores necessarily back then. Um, but yeah, it wasn't. But they didn't lend out. Uh, but here's here's the counterpoint to that, Alex. Uh, houses adjusted for inflation didn't cost no 500000 for a starter home. I think my grandpa paid 20 grand for his and he paid it off in three years. I mean, it was, my grandpa was not rich by any stretch, but that's how cheap homes were back then. And it wasn't a fancy home either. A lot of people think the fifties are like two cars. Like, nope, mm -mm, that's not how it was. Get my book, poor Richard's retirement. And you will see a night, a budget from 1955 compared to 2015 family budget. You'd be like, Oh, Alex, I guarantee you you're doing it. The mom stays home and takes care of the kids. You all live on a budget. Your kids don't all got their separate bikes and cars or anything like that. All right. Michael Manker, new guy. I think five bucks. You'd be surprised the amount of teens getting absolutely wrecked in drunk driving accidents in the 1950s. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't perfect. You can go through any time and find problems. Anytime. Taekwondo, two year olds. Weren't people. Pale people even more mean in the 1950s? Maybe, yeah. Look at crime rates, interestingly enough. Um, crime rates, I think, were higher in the 50s. Definitely the 60s and 70s. Maybe peaked in the early 80s along with the Volcker recession, and then it came down as the as abortion started kicking in, like kids that would have grown up under dysfunctional homes were instead aborted. If you don't believe me, go read Freakonomics. I'm not going to argue with people. That's the year of 2022. Cappy doesn't argue with people. He just tells you what's, what is real. Mookie, for two bucks, dude, you need mods to keep up with your chat. Um, Yeah, I try. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll go through it and we'll... Yeah. Hey, Cappy, look at your damn chat. Well, let's go through the chat. All right. What's up? Give me, give me a wrench. It wasn't a... Uh, I'm going to bench this too. Information... It was harder to indoctrinate people back then. Are you touching yourself? Uh, America's peak was 4663. Uh, where are the mods at? Boo -doo -boo -boo. Did I get them? I got them. I think I got them, right? I got them. Don't worry. Before I get uh before I go to bed tonight, I've taken a fun little thing I do at night, and that's called like ban the spurgs for my channel like any comments that are disparaging or just well not any i mean of course if you disagree with me i'm, I'm not gonna ban you um but if anyone besmirches people who are friends of mine or okay dude use the word grifter like gone just just gone <laughs> oh you set up your account last month oh and you have zero followers gone uh close uh, Taekwondo for two euros. Close. Thank God they invented the Chinese in the nineties. Hey, y'all like Walmart and the Chinese and international trade. I know you guys all don't like Clinton, but Clinton uh, did allow for that. NAFTA as well. Y'all like cheap stuff, right? Y'all like cheap stuff, right? Y'all like cheap stuff. You like cheap electronics like I'm using right now. Well, yeah, you think the nineties, you think the Chinese only ones making anything in this world anymore. Uh, Maxi Mike, raise tax, remove accountability. Yes, please. Right. That's all it is. That's all socialism is. 
the ultimate removing of responsibility. And then when you're not even responsible for yourself and no one is responsible for you, why would I work? You're just going to take all my money. Don't worry. You will all find out how this works very soon. Uh, Wisda Vision Productions, two euros. Can a brother get a blue wrench? Um, yeah, let me let me get there. Uh, there's uh, troll super chats. Uh, yeah, change. Just bear with me. Leaving them with that. Oh, I got a mixed up. Cade went for two bucks. The Last Boy Scout. Very good, sir. Very good. Great movie. If you guys haven't seen The Last Boy Scout, go get it. James Saberwolf, 10 bucks. People in the 1950s mostly had parents that had grown up from hard times like World War II, depression, and some maybe World War I. They, they grown up with maybe the best people, not what they did to the baby boomers. Yes, they may have grown up with the best people. And I don't think they're in the history of the world that precedent had been set where you're in a post-world world, uh, uh, United States and we were the only world's functioning economy. It's a large industrial economy by that time. Yeah, I mean, you're like, oh, let's give our kids everything. They never paid attention to rich kids. Never paid to just, just guys, study rich kids. You know, everything you need to know about parenting. Uh, do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Scrolling. Boop -a -doo. Watch camping. I'm going through the, the comments, making sure there's no more trolls. Uh, no social media, no television, no social match, you ain't gonna mouth. Okay, here we go. Alex Patino, truck driver, and Latino agent in the field. Five bucks. Blessed are the last two generations because they never had to starve, do without, if not available, had everything brought to them, never ha saw hardship. Correct. They also have now food being delivered to. I remember like McDonald's being a treat. I mean, it's just, and I was, I was at a restaurant today. I'm looking, and I, I know this may shock people, but in Wisconsin, you look, and there's just this table of fat people. I'm just looking and the, you could see the wife on the other end and she was fat, but I was looking through the valley of the two fat men that were with their backs facing towards me. I'm just like looking at like, did any of you do anything hard in life? Did any of you? Um, scrolling. Just going through it very thoroughly. Okay. Yeah. A Prince Almighty, two London pounds, bring back Nexus. Okay, good. That sounds nice. There we go. Uh, Trotsky, you know. Uh, Fifties common goodwill's decent place. Stalin for oh Jennifer, happy birthday Jennifer. Juan, the Aztec patriarch is here. Uh, Wiz Division Productions, five bucks. Not spending eight hours a day on TikTok is a great place to start if you want to start making good decisions. Laughing all, just kidding. Accountability is for losers. Yeah, I, I just, I. It creeped up on us all because I think we're all over twenty years old at least. But if you go back to when you were a kid and looked around and, and, and look at it today, just look around. Like people are fat, they're lazy, they're disgusting, they watch stupid crap. The guy's place I'm at, he doesn't have a TV in his house. And I, I just kind of look at most people. I'm like, yeah, this is it, it, it. It's time to leave this society and forget the economic reasons. Like, what possible community and belonging could you expect to have in this country? You can't have a family. Half the population doesn't want to have no kids, and they certainly don't like you. Right. Um, there's no stable employment or employers. Everyone's at each other's throats because Democrat and media puts us all into different categories. Uh, and then I, I social media, that's it. That's everybody's life for video games or porn. I no, I'm I'm done. Give me give me give me my Croatian hut. Um 
Thank you. Happy New Year, Stalin. Michael Manker, five bucks. Things were made to last in the 50s, so you save money not having to buy the same item again and again. Yeah, that's true. That is certainly true. Cars have gotten drastically better, though. Johnny Vegas, five bucks. Did you have a good New Year's Eve day? Yeah, for uh, New Year's Eve, I was very sick. Not pukey sick, just tired, headache, tired, sick. I had a cold. Um, I took a four-hour nap in the afternoon, took three showers. Uh, I went to bed at 8, fell asleep at 10, and woke up 8.30 next morning. And that was my New Year's Eve. And then New Year's Day, I was on with Rule Zero, Ryan Stone's channel. And then I went and visited some family. That was about it. Uh... Sam Whiskey, five bucks. Father's no best in the 50s, and a couch was just a couch. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And women were thinner back then, which is huge. Dung is fun, 10 bucks. I had an offer to go to college paid for and time off from my last job 10 years ago. I gave it a week to think about, and I said, I don't want to waste your money because I don't know what to do. Smart man. You're an honest man, Dung is fun. And you saved yourself all that time. Uh, be strong. Two bucks is a molar tooth worth getting a root canal over. Got me. Ask a dentist. I, I don't know. I have not had a root canal. Uh, Mexican Mike, two bucks. McDonald's to my doorstep should be a human. <laughs> There's a piece of me that love to see the Chinese take over the United States. And everyone's like, what do you mean? Get to the labor camps. What do you mean I can't have my cell phone? Nachima, 10 bucks. Wait, are you not in Israel anymore? I, don't you give, don't you normally de, uh, donate shekels? Uh, $10, quality over quantity always. Since planned obsolescence has maxed out on home appliances and smartphones, it's moved to healthcare. Quantity reduces value. Reduced value leads to meaningless society. Yeah, I, I there's very few moving part items in my place. I got a coffee maker. Um, a weed whacker, all Japanese though, all Japanese machinery, except for, uh, one, my truck, my truck. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, and even my smartphone, I think I want to get back to a flip phone. Uh, Sam whiskey, uh, five bucks cabbie. Did you find a good barber in South Dakota? No, no. Um, usually I come back to the twin cities and, uh, I get haircut from the GF or um, uh, like uh, fast clips or quick clips or whatever it's called. Uh, but I, South Dakota, I just worked. That's all I did. Just 10 months straight work. Uh, that was that was all I did. Um, I was pretty shaky looking. All right, there we go. Uh, questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.